the hardware, uh, the scheduler schedules warps of threads, that is chunks of 32 threads onto the hardware. And as we saw yesterday in the morning talk in the first session that uh, unlike CPU, uh, GPU is a latency hiding device. And uh, to, to optimally exploit the massively parallel architecture of a GPU, uh, it needs to do that. It needs to hide the latency. And to, to better understand what is latency hiding, let's have a look at this figure. Let's assume that at cycle one, our device had four, uh, three available warps that could be launched. The scheduler will pick up any of them and, and launch it. Now, let's say the first warp is picked up and it's launched and the first warp makes a memory request, which is going to take uh, two cycles to process. That means in the next cycle, that warp won't be able to progress. So that what the device does is it picks up another available warp and launches that. And the process continues till the memory request from the first warp is served and it is available to go forward. Now in the cycle four, if we had another available warp, it would be kind of a random pick between warp one because that is also ready to go forward and another available warp. So what we can take away from this figure and the, the concept of hiding latency is that the more work the device will have to do uh, available, it will be able to hide latency better. Now imagine after cycle one, if we did not have another warp available, for next two cycles, your device and your resources would have been sitting idle. So to make better use of resources, this is how a GPU operates. So you can, you can take away from this that in order to oversubscribe your device, you need to launch as many threads as possible. That means larger your grid size, the better performance you're going to get. But there are some physical limits. For example, for the V100 device that we have on our system that you're currently using, the number of maximum warps resident per SM can be 64, and uh, which translates to 2,048 resident threads per SM because each warp consists of 32 threads. And if you take a product of 32 and 64, you get 2,048. But there is another limit that is of maximum number of blocks. So the way these threads can be divided across blocks is, is up to you. But the number of uh, concurrent uh, blocks per SM cannot be more than 32 for a V100 device. Now, since V100 device has about 80 SMs, that would mean that the total number of concurrent threads that you can have on the device is 160,000, which is a product of 2,048 and 80. So that was all about kernel configuration. And uh, you will obviously uh, experience this uh, concept in the, in the exercises that we have for you. So to top this off, let's add another concept to this, the concept of memory coalescing. And this is one of the more important ones. Let's have a, uh, yeah, so the global memory accesses from the device are serviced in the form of memory transactions of size 32 bytes. That means uh, if, your thread is going to access a four byte number that is an integer. Uh, whatever it accesses the memory, it will be uh, processed in the form of 32 bytes. That means if uh, look, uh, looking at the bottom figure, if this is the thread that is accessing an integer of four bytes, this whole 32 byte chunk will be uh, processed for this vertical thread. And if you do not use the remaining amount of data that will actually be wasted, so the bandwidth is being wasted. To make better use, a good programming practice would be to ensure that your uh, uh, consecutive threads inside a warp are accessing memory locations which are closer to each other, contiguous memory locations. And that is going to uh, bundle up all the memory accesses for that particular thread within the least number of memory transactions possible. So the top figure is what you want to do and bottom figure is what you don't want to do. To try these concepts out, uh, you might want to move into the section two folder in the GitHub repo that we have and open up the readme file. The readme file contains all the details of exercises and how to build, run, and what parameters to observe and how to change them. Uh, just to brief you about uh, a few things, vecadd.ku is the, is the main file and that contains two kernels. Uh, first is the vector add kernel. Okay, so there is a bit of mess over here in the slide. Uh, the first kernel uh, for the exercise one is going to be the VEC add kernel. And for the next exercise for the memory would be VEC add kernel memory. You can build a VEC add file with, with a simple make command and you can run using sh run.sh script. 
And uh, if you want to, uh, for the second exercise, a memory exercise, you, want, you might want to use the other script that is uh, transactions.sh. Uh, the details about when to use which script and how to build are all in the readme file. So I will be here if you have any questions. You have uh, next about 25 minutes for this exercise. Uh, the next session will start at 3.20, so there is a 20 minutes break and you can use that for exercises as well. And if you have any question, feel free to unmute your mic and speak up as well. So the session three is about uh, debugging uh, on a CUDA code. 
so because yeah we all know that uh, coding is not just uh, writing some line of codes and then having great speed up is also about uh, debugging a program which happens always oops yeah so what are the tools to debug uh, actually Jonathan this afternoon already made a presentation about it so if you remember um, this will be very easy to read for you um, basically the printf is the one that you go to when you don't have other possibilities <clears throat> or when you think uh, you can debug it very very quick and you don't need any tool um, be aware on the CUDA though because when you put a printf in a kernel uh, it's not one, two, or eight threads that are executing the printf. Is it can be several hundreds or several thousands of, of threads. So your terminal can be uh, over over. Um, uh, yeah, can be too many output in the terminal. So what you do basically is just put a conditional branch on um, on the thread ID. Uh, here is in a one dimension uh, kernel with the one dimension uh, block and uh, we pick the, the master thread. So another way to debug is to use CUDA GDB. Um, it's very similar to the GDB you are used to use in a classic uh, CPU. So BT for the backtrace. <clears throat> Instead of info threads to have information on the threads you are executing, you have to add the, the keyword CUDA. So it's info, info, CUDA threads, then print to print the value of a variable, continue to run the program when you have stopped it with the breakpoint, step to go step by step to go inside the function, next and quit to, to quit the, <clears throat> the, the CUDA GDB. And run, uh, it's not written, but run to run the program at first. You can choose the context on which you are executing with CUDA GDB, which can be very useful. Uh, by choosing the, the ID of the kernel, block, and threads. Um, CUDA memcheck is another tool which allows you to uh, check the read and write of all the threads of the CUDA kernel into memory. This tool uh, has several other options like erase checking, init check, and sec check. Uh, <clears throat> we won't go into the details of them, but know that they exist. And um, if you want to to be sure your your program is uh, is valid, like when you use Valgrind on a CPU code, you can use this tool on the on the CUDA code. And total view is to me the equivalent of DDT, uh, if you know, for CPU. It's a GUI debugger that allows you to uh, to put the the breakpoints and to execute so step by step like a GDB, but with the GUI interface. <clears throat> so to generate to have the uh, the information necessary to uh, to uh, have uh, good information for the debugging, you will use the iPhone uh, capital G or iPhone line info to get the the line uh, info of, uh, of the debug. And um, Air Dynamic gives you the uh, the symbol um, information on the CPU side. Uh, which you must put a X compiler before the IR dynamic to for telling NVCC that this option is for the uh, host compiler. How you will use GCC, uh, GDB? So CUDA GDB, um, you will use it by putting breakpoints. For example, uh, b my functions dot cu, which is a file uh, two point forty eight, means I put a breakpoint at the line forty eight of the file uh, myfunk.cu um, <clears throat> and then I will run the program with run and it will stop at this breakpoint if it reaches it. You can print value pvar, p uh, array at 10, uh, um, print the, the 10, uh, 10 elements, first 10 elements of the array. Uh, you can control the execution like I said with run, next, step, continue. One thing to note is that there is no watch points possible on CUDA. So yeah, if you were used to use a watch point on CPU GDB, you cannot here. Uh, the changing of context is a bit more complex than on CPU. 
when you want to to change the threads on CPU is straightforward. You just put the ID of the threads. Here you you have a, a three to four dimension ID, so you can precise the ID of the thread by its um, it's a device uh, SM warp and lane. So this is the uh, hardware way of giving the coordinates of the thread. And there is a sw software uh, way of doing it with the block and thread. You can uh, notice here that block and threads are, have uh, three uh, integers is because this can be uh, three dimensional. To execute, um, you will Obviously, load CUDA, but it, it must be already done. And then you S run your your code. Uh, don't forget to add the dash dash PTY, which allows you to execute uh, CUDA GDB. And then a dash dash argument args if you have arguments for your program. If your program don't have arguments, you are not obliged to add the dash dash args. On this session, you will have two uh, files. Uh, vec at debug uh, printf <coughs> dot cu and the other which is uh, at debug memcheck dot cu. Um, you will go on them one by one. You will have to modify these files even uh, just a bit. The dot hpp you don't have to modify it. To compile just use make. First you run the code with uh, srun and the first file. And it, you will have the, the results on the left with the correctness test that fails. And your goal is to go on the right with the uh, correctness test that pass. To that, you can you help by the, what is thrown here on the output by the printf. That's why we are saying that we're debugging at printf. And the idea is to understand uh, what is going on here and uh, why, the, why the test is failing. The kernel is the same as you executed uh, during session one, session, session two. It's an addition of two vector. Then the second exercise is uh, you run the code with, um, so if you run the code without the QDMM check, it will just say you tell you that everything is going all right. But then if you run it with QDMM check, we'll, you will see a, a bunch of errors, which are like this one. And on this error, what you can see as information, which is quite useful, is the ID of the thread and the block uh, in which uh, read or writes are doing uh, badly. And it, it saved the whole, uh, the whole backtrace. So here we can see that there is an invalid read of size four bytes. So it's one float uh, for these uh, threads. And then you can insert a breakpoint and go into the context of these threads by doing CUDA kernel the row threads 700 block 000 or here block 300. <clears throat> Other commands you will have to use for CUDA GB is, for example, uh, setting a breakpoint with B and the name of a function. So instead of putting the name of a file to point and the number of line, you can put a breakpoint and the name of a function and it will stop at the start of the function. I think uh, Wu Sun Yang, uh, who did uh, some uh, very similar slide for the debugging on GPU in February 2020 for NERSC. So now you can go ahead and, uh, and start the exercise. And if you have any question, uh, we're here. Good luck. Is uh, my microphone working? Yeah, it's good. All right. Uh, so welcome, everyone. This is session four of the CUDA tutorial. Uh, we'll be introducing here some of the NVIDIA profiling tools that you've heard about in uh, many of the talks today and yesterday. Um, so we'll just start by throwing up this diagram that you've uh, seen a couple times already. This is another uh, incarnation of this optimization workflow diagram. Um, you might follow a process like this where you profile your application and collect some data, and then you analyze this data and, and try to uh, identify bottlenecks or uh, maybe like kernel, kernels that aren't behaving as you would like them to. And then you try and tweak things 
uh, in your kernel, um, and then see whether these tweaks or, or things that you've changed are actually changing uh, the application behavior in the way that you thought it, or the, the desired way. Um, and so two tools that can really help you with this, uh, these two steps, profiling your application um, to collect data and then analyzing that are uh, Ensite Systems and Ensite Compute. And the tools have sort of different scopes. Ensite Systems is a tool that can give you a, a cohesive picture of um, how your application is interacting with various system resources available to it. Um, and Ensite Compute is uh, more like a targeted analysis tool that can tell you about, um, they can give you specific performance metrics after you've say like identified a kernel that you would like to optimize and uh, further uh, work on. So first, uh, this is a very, uh, very, very quick interview, uh, sorry, sorry, very quick uh, introduction to Ensite Systems. Um, and we'll see more, uh, we'll, we'll say more about these various timelines uh, in uh, hands-on demonstration in a moment. Um, but the three main features uh, or three uh, main timelines here are the CPU workload timeline. Um, I'm not sure if you can see my cursor uh, in a second. All right, um, I'm going to keep this view just so that you can actually see where my cursor is. Um, so there's a timeline here that shows you the uh, workload on your CPU cores. Um, so I'm, I'm pointing to this, there's very thin uh, black line. You can, uh, in, in the GUI, you can expand this range so you can see this more clearly, but this shows you like the CPU utilization. Uh, CPU utilization. Um, there's another timeline that shows you how the, uh, uh, the OS threads uh, of your application are interacting with the CPU resources and also the GPU. Um, and these uh, different lines here indicate different things. Uh, so the black line is telling you the um, CPU core utilization. And then the, the line be below this, like, can't a uh, little small here, let me zoom in. Um, so then there's a, a red bar here that if you hover over this uh, in the application, you'll see a, a tooltip that will tell you which core uh, this actually corresponds to. So it's like the, the workload in black, uh, or the, the, the core utilization in black, and then this red bar corresponds to a particular core. And then below this, um, this shows you the thread state. So whether it's active or uh, scheduled or stalled, uh, things of that nature. Um, and so uh, this thread timeline, or Ensite Systems has support for like several um, APIs, so you can trace um, uh, like commands from like the CUDA API or OpenACC and several others that uh, are not, um, I don't have the full list, but there are many others that are supported. Uh, like for this tutorial, we're using CUDA, so you'll be able to see um, how these commands from the API, like uh, you know your CUDA device synchronize, which you see in this example, um, you can see how this is called from one of your threads. Um, and then, so uh, the final timeline here is uh, this device timeline, and this tells you about uh, memory operations and uh, like the, the compute workload on the GPU. Um, so for this example, we, are, we have a Tesla V100, and uh, there's like some blue bar here, the height of which tells you um, sort of like, like the kernel coverage um, over a given time. Um, so that is a like basic orientation for Ensight systems. Uh, one really useful feature is that if you, uh, you can like click on uh, things from one timeline. So say you could click on uh, from the device row, you could click on this blue bar that again, this corresponds to a, a kernel that's running on the GPU. Um, and then you can see uh, where the, the kernel launch was called in uh, like one of your threads. Um, so in the, here you can see additional information about the, the launched kernel, um, like the begin time, the end time, um, like the stream that it ran on, 
and again also uh, the the streams um, are available in this like drop down menu under the device row and this sort of analysis is useful because it tells you like what, what's the latency between when you um, like launch the kernel and then when's the kernel actually running on the GPU so that uh, is Ensite Systems and then uh, so this is a screenshot from Ensite Compute. Um, there are a few, I mean, there, there's a lot of uh, information in uh, that's generated in one of these reports, um, but we're just pointing out a, a few very uh, basic features. There's a spark chart that can tell you uh, about the uh, SM utilization and also the memory bandwidth utilization. Um, and, and these values are phrased in terms of something called like a speed of light value um, which uh, w exactly what that means is hardware dependent, but it's meant to, to just indicate uh, it was a fraction of the peak performance on that hardware. Um, so like if, if this SM is, uh, I guess this looks like it's around 3% or so, this means like you're doing 3% of the compute workload that would be possible on this uh, GPU if the hardware was being used at uh, peak capacity. And uh, sim similar meaning for the uh, memory bandwidth um, here. Um, so there also, if you were to click this apply rules here, um, this will automatically generate some uh, tips, like automatically um, generate tips uh, about like possible performance bottlenecks that are um, kind of recognized according to uh, some uh, yeah, it, it it can tell you uh, things that you should look take a closer look at to improve the performance. And uh, so this is actually a, a really realistic case of what you might see if you're looking at an application and you just like open up some random kernel. Um, uh, it's like quite common that your your kernel is neither uh, memory bandwidth bound nor uh, uh, compute bound. Um, and in this case, it might mean that that it's uh, latency bound, um, and this encourages us to to kind of look into um, further issues. Uh, so I'm going to switch to a hands-on uh, demonstration. Um, we'll open up a few reports and just poke around these a little bit. Um, so first, I'll uh, I'm, I'm not uh, on a, a GPU right now, but I was just kind of show you the commands that you could use to generate a report. Uh, we'll start with uh, Ensight Systems. Um, so if you're logged into, uh, or if you had a GPU session, you could uh, just use Ensys uh, profile. Um, and you can specify uh, the name of your profile. So something like, uh, we're gonna generate a report named Ensys underscore profile. Um, uh, you can specify stats equal to true. Um, this is going to output some uh, profiling statistics to the command line. Um, this will also generate an SQL database with all of the profiling information if, if you wanted to use that. I, I've never used that before, but um, it's generated there. Um, and then lastly, you could uh, you just select the kernel that you want to profile. So you could do something. Um, if you want to try this out, you can uh, try profiling the, the vector addition kernel that's been used in the other sessions. Um, there are addition, uh, additional options here. Uh, you can specify like a, a delay and a duration in seconds with like dash Y and dash D e, uh, respectively. So if you say like delay is uh, like one, then you're gonna wait one second before you start profiling. And you specify like five, then you're gonna um, collect data for, for five seconds. Okay, so then you can open up a report with uh, nsite dash this, and then um, this you open this report file. Okay, so uh, we see already, um, let me expand this. You can see uh, the timelines that I pointed out before. There's the CPU. Um, cores workload timeline, there's the OS threads timeline, and then there's uh, this device timeline. Um, so we can just 
expand out this uh, CPU cores workload, we see that uh, this CPU 59 seems to be doing a lot of work and there, there's some, some uh, stops doing some work for some reason around like one, one point uh, four seven seconds or so. Um, okay, and so that's sort of the CPU uh, workload timeline. Um, as I said before, there are these OS threads and it shows you all uh, the calls to the various APIs. So we see calls to the CUDI API, like there's a you know, CUDA malloc here and you can uh, click on this and um, there will be like highlighted ranges here that will show um, uh, sort of like the, the correlated calls and then um, like begin and end times for the thing that's actually uh, executed on the uh, GPU. Uh, well, okay, so sorry, what I mean to say is if, if we uh, we could click on a, a kernel here um, uh, from the GPU row, and let me zoom in a little bit. Um, we could click on uh, a kernel that's running here and then we could see uh, that it's actually launched um, at this time from the CPU. Uh, so we'll zoom in a little bit more. Um, so we click on this. Uh, this is again this blue bar down on the device row is showing a kernel that's executing on the GPU, um, and then it's launched uh, at this point. Okay, so there's uh, we can see, for example, like there's a launch latency of. This highlighted region is showing the launch latency, so that's like 44, uh, uh, 50 microseconds. Okay. Uh, again, if you uh, expand out the device row, you can see um, I have the, the kernels and the uh, um, memory operations. Uh, you can also see the streams if we expand this. Okay, um, so now we're going to switch to um, Nsight Compute. Uh, again, we'll just show the command that you can use to generate a report with Nsight Compute. Um, so again, if I was logged into, uh, or if I had a GPU node, then you can do S run um, and then NV Nsight uh, CU CLI. We can generate a report called CU profile. Um, then you can specify the kernel name with dash K. So this is a kernel for which you want to collect some uh, profiling metrics. And uh, so in, in the case of vector addition kernel, this would be vector add kernel. Um, if you're using this on, on uh, some more complicated applications, uh, you may have like a very mangled name, so you want to use like regex syntax to uh, maybe identify the the uh, kernel here. Um, but anyways, and then the last uh, thing to specify is the kernel to profile. So you can use this command, um, and then this will generate a report. Uh, and so the report uh, you can open with uh, NV and site. Okay, so we'll open this up and uh, take a look. Okay, uh, so again, these are the uh, measures I indicated or I mentioned before. This is the um, showing the SM usage and the uh, memory bandwidth uh, usage. Um, one uh, pretty neat feature here, or let's see. Uh, so if you go to this uh, page dropdown, um, you can click on like source and you can see the number of live registers per uh, line of like low level SAS code, which is it's kind of cool. Um, Uh, you can also see uh, these speed of light values for uh, different 
pipelines here. So uh, if we're just kind of poking around these lists, we can see that the speed of light uh, value for this pipe uh, FC FC64 cycles active. This is zero, so it means we're not doing any. Um, looks like the the FD64 pipe is not being used at all in this example. Um, yeah, so there's uh, a lot of information here, um, and I would just recommend everyone to uh, take a look at the uh, official NVIDIA documentation because um, we, we've only provided like very uh, kind of brief introduction to these tools. Um, and there are also uh, lots of really good uh, tutorials like from the uh, Blue Waters uh, workshops. Um, so there are tutorials on like Insight Systems and Insight Compute. Um, and I think, yeah, that's that's all I have on uh, these profiling tools. So I recommend like in the remaining time, uh, you could continue work on any of the uh, uh, sessions. Like if you wanted to continue working on any, any of the examples from previous sessions, uh, you could do that or, or uh, try out some different options uh, using the command line interface for Insight Systems, try like profiling um, the vector addition kernel. Um, another option is to try and add, uh, like use uh, NVIDIA tools extension to add some, um, like uh, add some timelines. Uh, uh, I think you can see this in the command line interface. Um, I think there should be a, um, some statistics output if you add uh, like, use NVTX to instrument your code.